So we had a Judgment Day promo, and the gist of it is that Drew McIntyre was announced for the tournament, but then he was pulled. So the storyline was that he, I guess, I don't know where. It's one of those things where they don't explain it to you. You just presume you're on social media. I presume from watching the show that Drew complained about his arm on social media. And so in storyline, they then checked out his arm and he wasn't cleared. Which begs the question, like, your medical crew sucks. Like, shouldn't they have checked his arm without having to read about it on Twitter? But anyway, he's pulled. Finn thinks that that means he's got a, a buy. But then he's told, no, actually, you don't have a buy. Uh, you will be facing Jey Uso. Which, of course, begs the question why Jey Uso wasn't in the King of the Ring tournament, but he is now. Well, you know. And uh, this match was very good. And I was told that uh, Jey Uso was the most over guy on the show. And he got his big win. And I do think that there is a strong chance that uh, Jey Uso becomes the King of the Ring. I think it's either him or L.A. Knight is my King of the Ring pick. So then Drew gets angry. And uh, keep in mind at this point, the fans are still expecting there's going to be eight matches on the show. And the first match with commercial and everything went over 20 minutes. So it's like, well, we got to really get going here. So instead, Drew is screaming at Adam Pierce. He's all angry. And he, he jumps in his car. This is one of those long, continuous shots. He jumps in his car. His car zooms off. Another car zooms right in. And CM Punk gets out. And Pierce says, you're late. Punk says, yep, it's quite a weekend. Oh, where's Drew? Pierce goes, he just left. Punk goes, what? Hit my music. And so he does the long walk all the way to the ring. And then he gets in the ring. And I swear to God this happened. On a show where fans are expecting eight matches, okay? He gets in the ring and he says, I'm sorry I'm late. I got locked in headquarters this weekend. Just got free. Which is half true. He did get locked in headquarters, but it was not until Monday. And uh, he says, you know, last week I cut a whole promo in less time than Drew's title run. But let's not do that this weekend. I'm going to sit here until he comes back. I'm hijacking the show. I know he's checking his phone while driving, which you should never do. So, Pat, tweet him and let him know that I'm here waiting for him. He looks at his watch. Well, I guess I should say something then. He starts cutting this promo. Explains that he tore his tricep in the Royal Rumble. Oh, yeah, we got it, buddy. Talks about how he was sad he wasn't at WrestleMania, but he'll just do it next year. Talks about how, uh, you know, I, I can do everything in this sport. Commentary. I'm a multi-tool. Oh. Drew's just a tool. Man, that brother ain't here yet. Well, <laughs> you know, I, uh, I'm i petty. Drew's a hater. He's a choke artist. I'm a choke artist too, right, uh, Pat? No reaction whatsoever to his Jack Perry reference. Zilch. Dead silence. And he keeps going on. Man, that guy's not here yet. Hey, you know, uh, if I see that guy again, I'm going to break his face. I'm like, what is happening? Are we doing any more matches on this show? And then finally goes, well, he's not here yet. Guess that means he's scared of me. They hit his music, and he leaves. Has there ever been a worse CM Punk segment? I mean, oh my God. This was bad. Brutal. How long did it go for, Steve? It felt like an hour. Someone's going to go, it was actually only three minutes. But oh, yeah. whatever it was, it was too long. Yeah, it felt like forever, unfortunately. That was uh, a waste of time. So then we had Natty and EO Sky. And uh, first time they ever wrestled each other. Good match. EO pinned her with a moonsault. Dakota cut a promo afterwards. Long promo. And she says she's going after the tag titles, and Asuka's injured. I don't know if she was actually hurt in the match. You know, people were saying, I think she got hurt in the match, and that's why the match fell apart. So she got hurt twice? 
She had a huge knee brace on, so I think she's been hurt probably ever since that uh, SmackDown deal where she went down and hurt her knee. Uh, but anyway, she's out for a while. That but sucks. But this was a good match. Then we had Ricochet and Ilya Dragunov. Oh, my God, this match. Here is a sign, everybody. Let me drop some wisdom on you. Oh, dropping knowledge. Look at this. Yes. The learning tree, Brian Yes, Alvarez. the learning tree. I'm going to get my own seeds. tree. The the mark of a great match. The nuts on that tree. Is when you got two guys in there. And one of them's Ricochet, who, you know, everybody likes him and everything like that, but they never really do that much with him. He won the speed title, but they barely mention it. And then there's Ilya Dragunov, who just got called up to the main roster. People, you know, some people know, some people don't. And I don't know, let's just say they went 15 minutes. For seven minutes, they're just killing each other, and the fans are just sitting there watching it. Like, that's cool. Hey, man, that was a big bump. But they're not that into it. And then they keep going. And then the crowd's chanting, holy you-know-what. And then the crowd's just absolutely losing it for these spots. And then Ilya hits his H-bomb, and like there's a standing ovation. They're like, man, that was awesome! This match ruled. Absolutely ruled. Ilya won, and he is going on to uh, the next round of this King of the Ring tournament. <laughs> this was great. It, absolutely it was great. Really fun. Sheamus is there in his street clothes. We're 90 minutes into the show. It's like, bro, can you get your gear on, dude? We're about to go. He wants to uh, face Gunther for the third time. Beat him. Zoe Stark, Ivy Nile. At this point, even though they'd already taken two matches off the show, it was very clear they realized, we're, uh, we got to get going here. So this was a short match, Z360 pin. They worked hard, but it wasn't much of a match. And then, again, if you're a fan in the crowd, you know, you're thinking, we've had uh, three matches. There's seven left. Why are we watching Truth do com comedy here? <laughs> and he's there doing comedy. And then they go to Braun Breaker, and he wants to know why he's not in the tournament. Pierce says, let's talk. Then they go to another interview. It's Finn, JD, and Priest. And uh, Dom tries to bring Carlito in and Priest. They're, they go back a year. Like, it doesn't matter if they're both heels. Carlito gets brought in and Priest goes, do not bring that guy in here. I had my biggest moment ever at uh, Porter, and this guy screwed me. We will never be friends. Get him out of here. Dom has to get him out of there. This Priest, like is, a, this priest is a great actor. I will give yes. him that. He's very natural. Good character. And then it's time for another tournament match. Finally... It's Bronson Reed and Chad Gable. One minute, Sammy runs in for the DQ. Well. At this point, I'm tearing my hair out. You realize how good a match Bronson and Chad Gable could have had? This leads to the announcement later that they're going to an intercontinental title match. Which, by the way, led to a funny moment. Bronson and Chad are just having a match, and Sammy runs in for the DQ. And then there's like a big three-way, and, you know, Bronson lays both guys out or whatever. He goes by stage, and Adam Pearce is mad at him. <laughs> like... Why are you mad at him? Another dude ran in and ruined your match. This guy just beat his ass. Like, why are you mad at him? But he was. At least, at least it didn't go 12 minutes before that happened. That would have pissed me off. Even it might have, but you know what? I would have liked to have seen 12 minutes with Bronson and Chad Gable. I guess. And then we had this Becky segment, which was actually worse than the CM Punk segment. I recapped this earlier. I will not do it again. But uh, it led to Liv coming out. And by the time Liv came out, she was getting what chance? Because the fans were so sick of this and wondering, how are we going to get four more matches? And you're sitting here talking about a hat with one hour left on the show. Bottom line is Becky's got a friend named Lyra that is going to help her out against damage control. Yes. Then we had uh, Dakota and Lyra. They're Irish. By the way, not Dakota. Dakota's from New Zealand. Oh yeah, yeah. You know, you know they we because in that long, insufferable, unending interview with Michael Cole and uh, Becky Lynch, one of the things Michael Cole made sure to tell us was, "You are both Irish." He loves the. Huh? Ah, hold on! You just off. killed the joke. Oh, good. He says you're both Irish. From Ireland. Yes. 
Now, I would make fun of that, except I watched Irish Pat McGee or whatever his name was on WWF uh, Challenge from 1986. Irish Pat Barrett? I, whatever his name was, Irish Pat Barrett. They, they introduced him from Scotland. <laughs> Did they really? Yeah. Is this that hard? <laughs> is it that hard? I think that's the theme of the show, folks. Is it that hard? Shouldn't be. It really shouldn't be. So anyway, uh, Lyra won, and no one knows anything about her or her uh, her deal. And uh, she's Irish, we know that. And she won. And then Kofi does a promo that we talked about. I am going to win this tournament for for Xavier Woods. I am going to beat an all time great Rey Mysterio. And then they cut away, and they start doing the main event. And I'm like, where are you beating him? When is this match? Can I see it? Is it on X? No idea. And then, thank God, we got the main event. That was great. Gunther and Sheamus. This match absolutely ruled. It was just great. And uh, after the match is over, you know, this was something that was worthwhile on social media. Yes. Sheamus posts a picture, and, like, he looks like he got put through a meat grinder his chest is just like chunks of flesh and skin, and he's just beat red and sweating. And he just looks like, I mean, worse than most people coming out of MMA fights. And he just says, there will be no fourth. No. He's tapping out, brother. <laughs> I did it one more time. I'm 46 years old or whatever. I'm done. Smart man. So uh, Gunther beat him with the crab in the middle of the ring. You know, they cut two matches, and they still went long. This yeah. went a minute past the uh, top of the hour. The ref is screaming at them to go home. And they finally went home, and the show immediately, the nonsense they immediately had. goes off the air. They could have did all of those matches and had shorter segments of talking in the middle and actually got all of them done, but they just will never be able to help themselves. Who cares who's in production? What was a unique hairstyle worn by men in the 60s? Pompadour. Mop and conk. Whatever what? that is. I beg your pardon, excuse Mop me. <laughs> cock and pump. And conk. Say that yeah, one more time. Nobody else talk. Pop and conk? Yeah. Are you sure, Granny? Read it again. Mev O P Mop. Comma. Conk. Mop conk. Mop conk? Conk. C O N K. Okay. Look it up. Okay. All right. Mop conk. Mop conk. That's two different things. I know. Damn it. Duh. <laughs> Why is she mad at us? Because <laughs> we're idiots. Hey guys, did you love this clip? If so, you should join our channel. Just hit the join button and you'll have full access to every single show that we do. Wrestling Observer Live, Wrestling Observer Radio, The Brian and Vinny Show. All of them in full HD, full length, plus archives of all of your favorite shows. Click join today and don't miss out.